All right, welcome back. You're still watching us here on the Daily Debate. And as um, I have mentioned earlier, I'd like to welcome once again our guest, um, Henry Ayub, a tourist guy. Thank you very much once again for joining Thank us you. here. And so this um, mission, this Egyptian mission under um, the supervision of Zai Hawass was discovered recently. And this golden um, city, which is also um, known as the, um, the Rise of Aten in Luxor, is 3,000 years old. So tell us more about the process of the discovery itself. When did it take place? How long did it take them to discover it? How big is this city? And then, of course, indulge and tell us more about the city itself. What is it about? Well, the city was discovered in the West Bank of the Nile River uh, in last September in 2020. Mm -hmm. And um, I think uh, they found only a quarter of the city yet. Mm -hmm. Just a only quarter? a quarter of the city. So it may take a long time because excavation goes very slowly, actually. You know, we don't, when we discover something or when we dig for something, we really don't use heavy machines, but mm. we use hands. Sometimes Up we, until now, uh, until in the 21st now. century. Yeah, exactly right. You're still using your hands, the uh, primitive even way so, of... Even so, you know, teeth brush, you know, because you are dealing with uh, so fragile uh, artifacts like mm. butter jars, you know, blades, etc. So. We don't know how many years, how many seasons will take, but still, it's, it will be a large city. They call it the, uh, the Golden Lost City. Mm. Uh, they call it Golden because it was built in the Golden Age, in the time of King Amunophis III, or Amunhotep III. Mm -hmm. And this was one of the greatest pharaohs ever. Yes, yeah, so he's uh, the father ruled, of Akhenaton Exactly well. right, mm. the father of Akhenaton. And uh, during his time, <clears throat> Uh, Egypt was a great empire. It mm. has borders from Iraq till Nubia. So you're talking about the 18th dynasty? 18th dynasty. Mm. This was, we call it the dynasty of stars. Mm. One of the most important kings was actually uh, King Amenophis III. So they call it the Golden City because it was built in the Golden Age of the Egyptian Empire when Egypt mm. was a great empire. Mm. And they call it the Lost because it was lost under the sands. Uh, mm. It's very interesting because this is the first time ever in, in the Egyptian history uh, we find the complete city. I was just going to tell you that we usually we would find monuments and when, when, when the execution process goes on you'd find tombs and mummies but to actually find an entire city lost on the sand. So we're talking about some kind of environmental changes that took place. Exactly right because this, like, everything we know about ancient Egyptian comes from the belief of life after this. Mm. So f we uh, can see pyramids, we can uh, see tombs, uh, mummies, uh, sarcophagus, coffins, but we don't find cities. So mm. it's very important, very, very important. That's why... Uh, I mean, here in Egypt, we don't do that. But if you're talking about the West, the lost city of Atlantis is like always in their fairy tales and their Hollywood movies. But a lost city in Egypt, um, apart from Alexandria, I think there was an underwater Alexandria is under the city. water, under yeah. the water. But Which in ancient time, thing. Alexandria is another story because mm. it's actually in the Greek, uh, Greek yes, time, another, Greek, or, yeah, Greek or Roman. Mm. But to find, we, we actually found in the history of the excavation two villages before. Really? The, uh, in the West Bank of the Nile River, what we call the village, the village of Dir al-Medina for the workers and the artisans. We used to work in the tombs of the pharaohs in the, in the west bank of the Nile River in the Valley of the Kings. Mm. And we found another important village, we call it the workman village uh, in Giza Plateau. Those actually the workers who built the pyramids. Mm. But we found their tombs, mm -hmm. we found their skeletons, we found their names. We found a little bit of, you know, like a bakery, we found a little bit of um, uh, an area of uh, salted fish because they were that was so interesting. You're talking about salted fish that thousands of years or meat as well, I believe I saw that as exactly. well. A bread, I think that's also, that was in the museum. And we, 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 we need to talk about the way they have had this process ongoing and it was existing 3,000 years ago before even science and technology ever existed in this world. But they managed to put this together. And um, I don't know what, how they call it, but when you want to really put these things together, the food, <laughs> and keep it saved and reserved for all these long years, you're talking about people that really understood. Uh, for sure. Beyond I mean, yeah. we the know, generations. We know from the excavation that the main diet for the workers, for example, was bread and beer. You know, they mm. call the bread ta, and they call the beer henqet. Mm. So Egyptian used to drink beer 3,000 years B B BC. Mm. Mm. And yeah. it's like a healthy diet for them. <laughs> it's a very healthy diet. Mm. And you know, they used to also uh, eat out of onion and garlic, and that's why uh, actually Immunity they were. system. Exactly yeah. right, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Well, 
This archaeological <clears throat> discovery again is another huge thing and from here let's talk more about the efforts um, and the strategy that the Ministry of Antiquities and Ministry of Tourism is exerting to brand Egypt and to um, be able to portray the uh, the image of Egypt from this perspective to the rest of the world, which, mind you, are very always interested in these things that are happening here in Egypt. In fact, uh, the uh, Minister of uh, Tourism and Antiquities is very energetic, and he has a vision. Um, he actually is doing two things at the moment. Mm. Uh, he focuses a lot on discoveries mm. and also maintaining the, uh, the, the monuments. Mm -hmm. For example, the Steppe Pyramid at Saqqara mm -hmm. was actually stored completely, which is very important because this is the oldest stone building ever was built in, in, on Earth. Mm -hmm. And then discoveries bring Egypt to lights all the time. I mean, this is not the only discovery, actually, in the last few months. We have a, a big discovery at Saqqara. Mm -hmm. They found actually um, about 80 coffins from the, uh, uh, from the New Kingdom and from the Late Kingdom. They discovered the mortuary temple of the wife of King Teti, hmm. the uh, first king of the sixth dynasty. So when you put this in the media, it brings a lot of, uh, you know, um, lies to Egypt. I mean, uh, brings good news to Egypt. Yeah. People wanted to come to Egypt, Definitely. you know? Definitely, yes. <clears throat> That's very interesting. Um, we also want to take another perspective on this, and we're very much delighted to have joining us on the phone, um, if you don't mind, um, um, Sir Henry, the uh, consultant to the Ministry of Tourism, Mr. Walid al -Battuti. Thank you very much for joining us. No, well, why? Thank you. And of course, Ramadan Karim to you, sir. Um, now, one of the professors of um, Egyptology, Mr. Walid, at the Hopkins University in the USA, did say that the discovery of this lost city is the second most important archaeological discovery um, since the tomb of Tutankhamun. What are your comments, and why is this discovery so special? Uh, well, first of all, Ramadan Karim, and uh, let me just tell you a very important thing. For uh, Egyptologists and archaeologists around the world, this is uh, a box full of jewelry, a box full of uh, uh, information that would add mm -hmm. a lot of things to, uh, 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 to the world of Egyptology. Mm -hmm. New things will be uh, uh, added, new things will be sold. Lots of, um, of theories might be changed as well. There is lots of very interesting things. So you will see that Egyptologists and archaeologists around the world uh, who really understand the value of this discovery to the knowledge of Egyptology. Not, not, I mean, some people would look at it from the perspective of tourism. But for archaeologists, they would like to solve lots of mysteries and lots of things mm -hmm. that they wanted to know what it is. And that's, that's, that's all about it. This is the, the discovery. Uh, it's going to add a lot. And mm -hmm. as the, the professor from uh, uh, Hopkins University said, mm -hmm. this is the second most important. Yes, it is. It is. It is very important. And lots of things will be solved through this. Um, I saw uh, that uh, uh, Egypt introduced to the world two discoveries from Saqqara, one in October, one in November. And then again, Dr. Zay Hawat came and added one in early January, and here we go, uh, a huge big discovery in the West Bank of, uh, of Luxor. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have, we have things coming up right and left every day. There is very interesting things happening in Egypt. Uh, as as we, we always say, uh, long live Egypt and God bless Egypt. I feel that we've been blessed uh, uh, last year and this year very much in the field of archaeology. As your guest was saying, uh, Dr. Khaled al anani is very energetic, mm -hmm. and uh, he did manage uh, to restore. And a very interesting thing, I've heard Dr. Zay Hawass said, I'm happy that I've lived to see my dreams uh, being fulfilled. Everything that I've dreamt of, Dr. Khaled al anani came and accomplished. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the good thing is the good feeling uh, among them, who they, they, they credit each other, and this one says, he started at this, I'm finishing this. And it, it's very good and, 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 and great that the Egyptian government is not sparing any uh, uh, effort to help uh, in all aspects and, and to finance all these projects at the same time where we have other things that is going on. 
Mm -hmm. Yes, Mr. Batuji, as you've correctly said, um, from an archaeological perspective, this is much more interesting and exciting for them because they get to um, know more about the history and the origins and the datings and, and all the details um, about such a discovery. And that's why it was announced that the first goal of this mission was to date this settlement um, using hieroglyphic inscriptions found on the clay caps of um, the wine vessels. Now, what do you think these inscriptions will show and what further information do you think um, archaeologists have uh, to share with the rest of the world about um, the details and the datings and the history of this lost city? Well, no one can really say anything till the study started, it starts to come up. Mm. Okay, so uh, people only talk about what has been released in the media. But to be honest with you, once the archaeologists uh, uh, and Egyptologists that is working on site, they start to release scientific papers saying we found this, and, and, and they, they start to release all the, the information about the discovery. This will give vast knowledge to mm. uh, 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 more studies and be, be able to uh, 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 you know, build on, on, on lots of other things and, and solve lots of mysteries. I believe there is lots of things to be solved uh, regarding religion, mm -hmm. uh, ancient Egyptian religion, which was still very difficult sometimes, and, and it has lots of mysteries. Uh, the same thing, uh, things get to do about the daily life. Mm -hmm. It is very important to know lots of things about the daily life. I uh, uh, overheard Dr. Zay Hawass on uh, one of the TV shows, and he was talking about the butchered and uh, how, many, how many kilos of, uh, of uh, meat that he takes and he dries and, and all of this. So there is a butcher place. I mean, there's little tiny details. Once it, it's mm. going to be released, it's going to be very important. Interesting, of course. Mr. Walid Batuti, consultant to the Ministry of Tourism, thank you very much for joining us here on The Daily Debate. Um, going back again here with you, um, Mr. Henry Ayoub, and um, I believe during the break you also told me that there was a lot of um, historical perspective to the city in specific that has um, significance and importance apart from the incident of discovering it by itself tell us more about that yeah first of all the inscriptions the hieroglyphic inscriptions uh, on one of the um, uh, uh, vessels uh, wine vessels they actually shows us that the 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 name of Amenhotep the third mm. So it means this city definitely dating back to the time of Amenophis the mm third. -hmm. That's very, very important. Secondly, the name of the city. It's uh, the rise of Aten. Mm -hmm. Aten. And that was also written on the vessel, uh, the wine vessel. No, no, the name of it, of it the name of the city itself. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the rise of Aten, probably in the other pottery. Mm -hmm. I don't really know, but uh, still the name itself, you know, uh, the rise of uh, the rise of Aten or dazzling of Aten. Aten was a god um, was adopted by Akhenaton, mm. the father of King Tutankhamun, mm. and it was rejected by all the priesthood of uh, of the god Amun Ra because God Amun Re or Amun Ra was the main god in Luxor. Mm. So when a young king Akhenaton uh, came to the uh, came with idea that there is only one God in the universe and I'm the only high priest mm. and that's the problem by the way because remember God Amun Ra has a lot of like about at least 5,000 people 5,000 high priests actually working in mm. the current temples complex mm. uh, when the king said I'm the only high priest it means a bread taken from their mouth mm. and that's why it means this was not Akhenaton started his new religion during his father because he was a core agent with his father hmm. for maybe a couple of years, four years actually, four years. Mm -hmm. So the name itself has a, a very important significance. It means uh, the, the beginning of this cult started in Luxor, mm -hmm. but he could not continue because the high priest has rejected the idea and that's why he moved to a place called Amarna, right now in Minya, and that's why he ruled the country for about 17 years with Akhenaten. I mean, Akhenaten was an, an, an amazing king. I mean, he was a philosopher. He was... Um, he, he lives... Yes, I believe that if you want to really say a saying of someone being a lotter, you would relate him back to Akhenaton. Yeah, exactly I, right. I mean, he... It's he, a he, saying that was around in Egypt, I believe, yeah. 
I mean, he, he was, I mean, if you, if you compare his uh, hymns, for example, to the uh, Psalm of David number 04, 104, it's identical. So he lives before his time. But, I mean, the, his new idea was not accepted by the by Egyptians father, because, yeah. you know, look at Egypt geography, by the way. Egypt is stable. The Nile River is running from south to the north, sun shining every, every, every morning. We, we, don't, we don't want to change. Sometimes the change is not good all the time. When I cannot want to ch change the whole belief, just imagine that I'm 70 years old and a young king, like 22 years old, comes to, come to me and said, you know what, what you believe is fake, is wrong. It, is a, it will be a big shock for me, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why Akhenaten could not spread his cult in Luxor or Thebes, and that's why he moved to Amarna, where mm -hmm. he uh, ruled Egypt from there for about 17 years. And unfortunately, um, after his death, you know, uh, his son Tutankhamun came back to Luxor and King ruled. Tut, who, who's, who's known as Tut, you mean? Tut uh, King Tut. King who, Tut. Who, also, who also died at a very young age. He was nine, nine. 18 years old. He was nine when he became a you king became and he ruled the country for another nine years. And even so, his, his chair, some of his chairs in the Egyptian museum, his name was Tut Ank Aton mm. because he was following his father when he was a young, yes, yeah. a young boy. Yeah. But, you know, uh, the the uh, chief of the uh, the chief of the army, uh, you know, ask him or advise him. You know, we are not happy about this. His name is Hor Muhab. We are not happy about this religion. I advise you to come back to rule the country. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about Egypt. finding a quarter of this lost city mm -hmm. so far. So I assume that you have an idea of the 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 dimensions and the um, how big this the city is. And um, in your estimation, how many people did it hold? Because we believe that the city had a lot of um, different um, services and had a lot of it was divided into um, a lot of categories so I believe that um, a large communities lived in it tell us more about your expectations. I think I assume in my point of view maybe I'm, I'm right or maybe I'm wrong maybe 5,000 people used to live there. 5,000 people yes yeah. quite a lot yeah. of a number yeah, in exactly this area. Right, because it's, it was a, a, a complete uh, city it's not a village probably mm. so I think because the numbers of the of the of the houses there I think maybe a hundred right now. So if we four hundred families live together, multiplying with maybe five, mm. six people. So th that sounds very interesting because you said it could take a bit more time to excavate it as they're doing, doing it in a very primitive perspective. Are they assuming that maybe they'll possibly find more mummies and more um, tombs that would belong back to the royal family, or was it a tradition and 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 a norm back then that? these kind of cities was not where they would be buried, but they would go and be buried um, next to temples, for instance. Well, uh, it's a very interesting point because they found a skeleton mm. inside the, the, the city itself. So uh, the poor people or the workers, they, they did not have access to mummification, for example. Mm -hmm. So we are not expecting to find the complete mummy. Mummification mm -hmm. is very costly, very uh, expensive. Mm -hmm. The only people can uh, afford mummification, the high nobles and kings and the queens, mm -hmm. but not for the public, actually. And afford as in what? Because I believe me, up until now, I'm sure a lot of people are not aware what, mon what process takes place in mummifications. Well, uh, there's a lot of materials, mm -hmm. actually, uh, a lot of herbs. Uh, herbs. And, uh, exactly, right. Uh, yeah, and uh, a lot of henna as well. Uh, henna and of, herbs. Oh, yes. yes. Would mummify you there's for 3,000 years. Yes. Wow. <laughs> There's a lot of uh, materials. And, Are you uh, sure about that? Uh, 100%. <laughs> so I haven't heard about we that. Have, so I'm quite we have, surprised. We have an amazing um, uh, museum in Luxor called Mummification Museum. We have all the materials which used in, in mummification. And it's very interesting to see all kinds of things, which is right now, I mean... Some I thought there's the, some kind of chemicals or something that is like extraordinary about herbs. That's, that, that was... Uh, there's a lot of herbs that was were, a were used in mummification, mm. and it takes about 70 days to mummify the human being bodies. 70 days. 70 days? Yes. Wow. <laughs> How did they find that out? Well, from the from the virus, from uh, from the. It says they yeah, say exactly. everything. Yeah, These people are so amazing. I mean, they just left everything behind so exactly. that you wouldn't be dazzled. Seventy days to fight human mm. beings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, now, we have experienced a couple of days ago, and I'm sure that the whole world has been talking about it. And they're still dazzled with it. The golden parade, and that was um, not just. We, we will not just talk about the process and the organization and all that. But let's talk about the importance for 
moving um, these mummies that have laid there for hundreds of years to their new destination at the Egyptian Civilization Museum. Um, and why was it important to give them this honor of an international um, um, parade? What made it so special? And uh, why is it also so well, important? Uh, I would like to explain the story from the very beginning mm. about mummies because that's very, very important. I'm very interested. Yeah. I mean, I'm yeah. really interested. Apart from the city, I really want to know <laughs> yeah. how these people before, were mummified. Before I talk yeah. about, before I talk about this point in particular, let me explain something. Uh, the Egyptian history in general lasted for 3,000 years BC. Mm -hmm. We divide this history into what we call kingdoms. Mm. So we have the archaic period, the old kingdom, the middle kingdom, the new kingdom, and the late period. Between them, we have some dark ages. We have we, we call it first intermediate period, second intermediate, third intermediate. Mm -hmm. So if you like to draw a line to the Egyptian history, it was going up and down, up and down. Mm -hmm. During the old kingdom and the middle kingdom, the pharaohs built the pyramids, like Saqqara, Dahshur, uh, Maidum, Giza, Abu Rawash, etc. We haven't, the, 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 the pyramids were built to be tombs for the pharaohs, mm. but we haven't discovered any mummies inside the tomb inside any of the pyramids yeah exactly that's true we haven't discovered any mummies inside any of the pyramids we have 119 pyramids with the new discovery of dr zaha was mm. for the queen uh, you know or the, the, so the none of, of these the, none of these none of these tombs were in the pyramids that was originally supposed to be built to bury them we haven't found the mummy of uh, hufu Kiops, kifern mikarinos uh, zoser titi Pepi, all of them we haven't discovered so uh, the new kingdom pharaohs who came later on they actually learned the lesson. Mm. To build a pyramid will cost a lot of money, a lot of, you know, things. Mm. So why, it's a good at advertising, here I am coming to steal me. And that's mm. why they choose the valley of the kings. When I say a valley, it's a very narrow valley, you know, surrounded by two mountains, very easy to guard. And then they started to cut the tombs in the bedrock, some of them 100 meters deep in the mountain, mm. in Luxor. But when they choose this mountain, they choose the shape of a natural pyramid, the mm. idea of eternity. Mm. So we did not find every mummy inside her tomb. We, we didn't find Ramses in his, in his own tomb. We didn't find Amenophis in, inside his own tomb. But we found them in caches. All right, so we're going to have to hold this thought there to get back to the, to, to, right after the report. So we have a point here. They built, they built pyramids to, bury, to be buried in, but they never were. And then they dug meters inside the mountain that looked like pyramids um, to be buried in. And mm -hmm. yet the tombs were found and the mummies or their we're bodies were not. Yeah. That, that must be a mystery. It's very interesting. It gets very interesting. We're going to talk about that, but All please right. stay tuned. We'll be back okay. right after this report. The Royal Mummies Hall um, have been receiving visitors on this um, World Heritage um, after the mummies were ready at the new resting place where they are currently being displayed at the Egyptian Museum for Civilization. We'll be right back. The Royal Mummies Hall at the National Museum of Egyptian Civilization will be ready to receive visitors on April 18th, coinciding with the World Heritage Day following the restoration of 14 mummies. The restoration team dismantled a number of mummies, sorted them from the nitrogen capsule and prepared them for their new exhibition venues, according to the latest scientific methods used. Restoration and processing works are underway for the rest of the mummies in their awaited venues. The mummies of the kings of Seknenra, Ramesses II, Ramesses III, Ramesses IV, Ramesses IX, Tutmosis II, Tutmosis III, Tutmosis IV, Amenhotep I, and Amenhotep II, as well as Seti I, are ready for display. Moreover, the mummies of queens Merempeteh. Hatshepsut and T will be ready for display on the World Heritage Day. It is noteworthy that Egypt held a golden parade celebrating the transport of 22 of its mummies from the Egyptian Museum of Tahrir Square to their new resting place in the National Museum of Civilization in El Fustat. 
Welcome back again. You're still watching us here on the Daily Bit. Only gets very exciting. <laughs> Pardon me, but I had to go out to this report, Mr. Yeah. Enri Ayub. Um, yes, you were talking about the fact that, after all, when they built the pyramids, supposedly they were supposed to be buried in it, but they never were. And then they, um, you discovered tombs for them, buried meters inside the mountains at the Valley of the Kings. The Kings mm -hmm. where it used to be called Tiba, is that? Mm, Thebes, yeah, Thebes. Or was it, was yeah, it actually. Which the was Greeks the main center for them. Mm -hmm. And the tombs were empty. So. What happened then? What happened? <laughs> yeah. In fact, after the, um, the end of the 20th dynasty, after the, the, the last great pharaoh in ancient Egypt was King Ramses III. Mm. After this, we have the decline period, actually. Mm. So the high priests found that Egypt became weak. It's not very strong. And they were so concerned about mummies. Maybe the invaders will come one day and they will steal them or they, don't, they will never show respect to them. So they, f they collect them, rewrap them from the very beginning, and they actually put them in one cache in, in front of Queen Hatshepsut Temple. We found, actually, it was discovered in 1881, uh, uh, 40 mummies were found together. Oh, okay. in the front so they of had a mass grave where they collected them and they put them one Put them area. together, and mm -hmm. there is another 14 mummies in the tomb of Amunophis II in the Valley of the Kings. Mm -hmm. We call it Key V35, which means King Valley number 35. So mm -hmm. we discovered 40 in Queen Hatshepsut, in front of Queen Hatshepsut and Temple. And mummies, assuming they're all belonging to the royal family. But the re some of them were not actually relatives, but you know, uh, mainly for, for kings actually. Mm. So we have actually 40 and the others were discovered in uh, inside the tombs of Amenophis II the th the in the uh, Valley of the Kings. And, and from them were the 18 um, kings and four queens that were um, taking part at the Golden Parade. Yes, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Well, yeah. I, I still want to go back again to the... Please, please, To yeah. the hen and the herbs. Okay. Or but, but let's go over, um, from another perspective, of course, in, um, the exerted um, efforts that has been done by the Ministry of Antiquities to be able to um, provide Egypt and to show Egypt as, uh, to the rest of the world, as a country for um, great civilization for always and a very attractive uh, touristic site, especially when it comes to the cultural tourism. We are joined over the phone by Mr. Yahya Abdel Qadir, a tourism expert. Thank you for joining us and Ramadan Kareem to you, Mr. Yahya. Ramadan Kareem to you, Mrs. Mean and your guest. Um, now, as I've said, the Ministry of Antiquities have exerted these great efforts to um, sort of either renovate a number of museums in the past period and different governorates in order to promote tourism in Egypt. And one of them, of course, is the Egyptian uh, Museum for Civilization, where We've seen, um, or the whole world has been seeing this um, golden parrot of the queens and the kings being transported there, um, being currently displayed. Um, we've also seen the Minister of uh, Tourism um, during um, the tour that uh, he took along with the uh, President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi. The different um, civilizations and the different eras and binding them together and um, it, was, it was just put on in a very beautiful way really. Everything is so displaced in an organized manner where if you just take a look around it you will know more about what Egypt is about. Tell us about the importance of these renovations to the tourism industry in Egypt. Well, uh, thank God, you know, like we have uh, a great ancestors and rich history and I uh, like to greet your, your guest as, as well, Mr. Ayub. Thank you. Uh, really, you know, like for, for just like within the last year, we opened uh, a series of museums, you know, like in Hergada, in Sham Sheikh, in Kafr Sheikh, and as well, you know, like the great Al Fustat Museum for Civilization. Uh, this is a state of the art, and you have seen uh, on uh, April 3rd, the whole world has been mesmerized, you know, like uh, by the uh, fabulous uh, parade of. Uh, uh, the Royal Mummies that is going to be on display, inshallah, on um, April 18, which is the World Heritage Day. We have like three days, you know, like world, uh, worldwide, you know, like uh, Museums Day on the 19th, a Tourism Day on the, on the uh, 30th of September. So uh, this is a great occasion for us because, uh, as we have seen from the uh, World Media Review, uh, everybody, you know, like is covering this event. And we have daily visitors range from seven to 9,000 per day. Mm. This is the largest volume of visitors uh, in Egypt, you know, like there's going to be visiting one location. And next week, as I know uh, through Mr. Hamdi Zeki, former uh, tourism council in Madrid, we have a Spanish delegation from mm. Bilbao City 
and the Basque region that's going to be arriving next week to visit the Fostat uh, Museum of Civilization, and they moved to Luxor to check on the progress of the lost city that has you been reviewing with your guest and Mr. Walid Batuti. And really, we uh, we are delighted, you know, like to have all these treasures unearthed, and we are working on it because it brings Egypt, you know, like uh, with attention. And thank God, you know, like large number of uh, worldwide population have been vaccinated now. So shortly, inshallah, by end of Ramadan and Eid, we'll have, you know, like tour guides, you know, like, and uh, tour groups arrival is coming back to major Egyptian museums and resorts as well. Yes, um, Mr. Yahya, I also want to ask you about the art and cultural city at the new administrative capital because the new administrative capital is also going to be officially inaugurated very soon. We've seen um, a, a, a merging of different forms of cultures and buildings that are also built in the modern era. But um, speaking of the new administrative capital, and as we see, it's, we're always being surprised here with um, the outstanding um, whether it's infrastructure, architecture, um, organization, and display even, what are we expecting to see at this new art and culture city at the new administrative um, capital? Well, really, you know, like as we have been, you know, like witnessing for the past uh, five years since the initiation of the uh, administrative capital, and uh, I hope shortly that we find, you know, like an attractive brand name for the administrative capital because it looks like it's a location for administration. But apart from that, it is a business hub. Mm -hmm. uh, it has, uh, you know, like uh, entertaining, you know, like uh, artistic and culture uh, centers and historical, archaeological, as you outlined. There's going to be opera houses, museums, libraries, uh, extensive green parks and rivers, you know. So it's going to be a, a state of the art, you know, like new capital for Egypt. And uh, there's going to be a museum that's going to be opening soon. And this museum is going to be like uh, world capitals of Egypt that is going to represent uh, the major uh, old capitals of Egypt through uh, at least uh, 5,000 years of historical and archaeological civilization. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's going to be like a new, uh, you know, like addition to our heritage and treasures that we have, you know, like the old world. But this mm -hmm. is going to be a step in the future, uh, inshallah. Thank you very much, Mr. Yahya Abdul Khadir, tourism expert. Thank you very much for joining us on the daily debate. We're back again to you, Mr. Henry Ayyub. We still have around 10 minutes' time, less than that a bit, um, to discuss further more about the mummies. <laughs> it's yeah. a very interesting topic. I'll tell you also why, because there have been a lot of um, um, organization and cooperation being done to ensure that these mummies will be transported safely and in one piece. And um, they were talking about nitrogen, um, vehicles yes. and, and, and mm -hmm. very complicated stuff I really mm -hmm. don't understand so um, after all these years and since it all about is herbs at the end of the day how do they ensure that they keep them at the same um, position and status that they first discovered them in well, that, as you mentioned, actually they bought uh, nitrogen boxes. Why nitrogen boxes again? I think that's see. just to keep the the uh, the uh, the body in the same same situation, same um, uh, you know conditions. Uh, it's very medical stuff actually, but uh, that's what what has been told mm. from one of the doctors. Plus, um, you know. Um, uh, they uh, they bought them in the I was in this museum this morning by the way the uh, civilization museum mm -hmm. they bought them in an amazing uh, hall of display actually uh, I saw that during the inspection of the president it was just breathtaking uh, yeah. I mean it T just made you feel like you were just underground but it's Kings, like exactly right. yeah, yeah, yeah virtually it was yeah. it's yeah. really great yeah exactly right uh, temperature control better way of display I mean the old museum is fantastic it's one of the landmark in Egypt mm -hmm. you know no but doubt I mean, about new it technology but needs, exactly yeah. Right now, the new technology, temperature control, because that's why they actually did not open it to the public yet, because I think they need, you know, to... They prepare. said they needed 18 days to get Exactly, them ready. Right, just to make everything sure, because they were the, uh, the kings and the queens of Egypt. Let me tell you a story about... And there was the, a one queen that there was a lot of stories about it, pardon uh, me. Queen Hatshepsut, yeah, Was surely. that the hair, the hair thing? Uh, yeah, tell us about that, because everybody was like, what, what did you do? I mean, you spoke about everything, and you never said about the routine you would do to fix your hair. I mean... It's just the condition of, of the hair. It's just as if 
you know, she just died yesterday. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, um, yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's a technique of the mummification. Mm. I mean, those people really they have an amazing technology. Let me tell mm. you something very important. We have something missing in the history. We have a gap in history. You know. Interesting. What is uh, that? Uh, it, it, because uh, since we lost the great library of Alexandria, we have this gap. So maybe one single dig will make us rewrite the history from the very beginning. Mm. At Saqqara, we're going to write a new chapter in history of Egypt, of Saqqara. We have a lot of people, a lot of great characters in ancient Egypt. We haven't discovered their tombs yet. Mm. We know them by names. Let me tell, tell me more about the fact that, because what I've heard, in the, that this is 100% Egyptian teamwork that are working yes. in mm -hmm. all these. And again, we're talking here about well-trained um, people. We're talking about... Uh, um, the appropriate technology, we're talking about appropriate um, synchronization, um, unlike in, 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 in tens of years where we would always depend Just, on yeah, French and German mm -hmm. um, archaeologists to help. So what change has that added to, 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 to this field in Egypt? To be very honest with you, Dr. Zaha Wes, <clears throat> the one who started, uh, I used to work with him uh, in 19... 92 not, till 1996 actually and uh, he is very enthusiastic and he got his PhD from Pennsylvania University and uh, he had a vision why we have to work for the foreigners French Americans as servants and he started to train the very good team he sent them some of them abroad and they come back teach others and that's why we have an amazing team mm. It's uh, qualified, even so more qualified than Americans or British or any foreign, actually, expeditions. Um, mm. a new technology helps us a lot to discover more. We right now use, actually, uh, like a uh, radar to see if there is any empty chambers inside or not. Or, so new technology helps us to make it a little bit, you know, fast. So, so the thing is that because that's a question people are saying, well, there's a lot of new technology. I'm sure that this land lies on at least... 90% um, more of discoveries that have not been discovered. 70%. But the fact is, mm -hmm. yeah, 70%. Mm -hmm. Well, that's still a large percentage. Mm -hmm. So the fact is that you would still use the primitive way because it's not about finding it, it's about how to find Preserve it in it. one piece and um, in, in its condition and not being destroyed or it is, uh, broken it is, out or something. It so is forth. very interesting to, uh, to find. Mm, and the patience, uh, and then exactly. you have. It is yeah. very interesting to find a city, mm. but it's very important to keep all what you found in, in a piece. good condition mm. you know mm. that's why sometimes when you are dealing with pottery jars when you are dealing with the statues they were buried under the sun for 3,000 years so when it comes to the air it needs like a baby mm. you know it's really yeah. like a baby certain handling exactly yeah. mm. now the gem <clears throat> is also another awaited event that everybody's waiting for i'm sure that there's going to be a much more display and um or organization taking place in this regard um, tell us more about your expectations in terms of its inauguration, how the process is going to go, and again, why is this event so international for everybody I think else? Everybody is waiting for the Egyptian Museum, the great Egyptian Museum, to be opened. Mm. Um, especially, it's going to house the most attractive collection of King Tutankhamun. You know that King Tutankhamun tomb has more than 5,000 items. Mm. <coughs> One of the... I, uh, I heard there was going to be another parade just for it, his it collection. Would be, it would be maybe more, more attractive. More interesting. Uh, more interesting. interesting. Wow. Uh, because, for example, we have the golden mosque of and King Tut. And he will Tut. be moving to gem. To the gem, yes, mm -hmm. to the gem. Go, uh, Tutankhamun uh, golden mosque weighs 11 kilograms. And mm -hmm. um, in my tours, I found a lot of my, my guests, actually. Uh, one of them, I remember uh, a couple of years ago, she said... Let me just go alone to, the, uh, to see the mosque of King Tut. Anyhow, the uh, tour managers, uh, tour guides were, are, were not permitted to go inside the room because of the echo and uh, very crowded. And she came out with tears on eyes. And I told her, why you are you crying? She said, since I was five years old, I wanted to come to Egypt to see the golden, the golden mosque. So that's very, very important. That is very important. I have a lot of uh, my guests, previous guests, you know, guests, they said, we cannot wait until the Egyptian, the great Egyptian museum will be opened. Henry, we will come back 
first country on the list, Egypt. Yeah, that's that's so, such a so impressive and, to know. And even so, the, the location of the, the new museum, by the way, mm. first of all, it's huge, like mm. a size of airports, you mm. know, and um, it's nearby the pyramids, like a walking distance. Mm. And just, a lot of services are being done, exactly, renovations. Exactly, the infrastructure is just amazing. The area just exactly, changed Exactly, yeah. I mean, coffee shops, We're restaurants. We're all excited ourselves gift, to go. Exactly, right. Yeah, yeah. So that's such I cannot wait as, as a tour guide um, to go and uh, win. Well, I think the pandemic, the pandemic ate a lot from our plans here yeah, around yeah, the world, generally yeah. speaking. Just let's hope we'll be safe and sound. Unfortunately, our time is up, Mr. Henry Ayub, tourist guide. Thank you very much for joining thank me. You. It was my pleasure. On the Daily thank Debate. You. Thank you. And that brings us to the end of our episode of the Daily Debate. I'm Ismi signing off. Thank you for watching. Thank you.